1987, Wendy Nill and Caroline Pierce were in their 20s and building lives for themselves. They did not know each other, but each had a job and friends and have found bedsits in Tunbridge Wells in Kent, a lively town at the time despite its staid reputation. Then their paths crossed with David Fuller. Wendy Nill, 25, had moved into a bedsit after the failure of her marriage. A friend at the time believes that the breakup came as a blow, describing Wendy as independent and hardworking, but set on having children and making a home. Wendy had a job at a photo shop, and on the night of the 22nd of June, her boyfriend dropped her at home. The following day, her naked body was discovered, her blood covering the bed on which she lay. Neighbors had heard nothing through the thin walls of the bedsits, but she had been battered, sexually assaulted, and strangled. Caroline Pierce, 20, worked at a popular Tunbridge Wells restaurant. On the night she disappeared, there were reports of her screaming from her doorstep. It was three weeks before Caroline's body was discovered, 40 miles or 64 kilometers away, dumped naked apart from her tights in an overgrown drainage ditch on farmland in Romney Marsh on the south coast. A tractor driver only spotted her by chance because of his position high up in his vehicle's cab. Officers believe Caroline was killed on the 24th of November after she was sexually assaulted, beaten, and strangled. Caroline's injuries were similar to Wendy's. They lived within a mile of each other. Both their keys were missing. Detectives were sure the killings known as the bedsit murders were linked. In the 1980s, there were no cell phones to track her CCTV pictures to scan, and DNA analysis was in its infancy. The National Database of Offender Profiles was only created eight years later. Detectives had some forensic evidence, a bloody fingerprint on a shopping bag and a footprint on the cuff of a white blouse from Wendy's flat. In 1999, detectives' hopes were dashed when a DNA sample failed to match anyone on the new database. By 2019, forensic experts had developed new techniques for collecting DNA from damaged sperm samples like the one on Caroline's tights. To this, they applied another relatively new technique, familial DNA, which allows scientists to identify whether someone is related to a person whose DNA is discovered at a crime scene. Familial DNA allowed the investigators to bring down the 6.5 million profiles on the National DNA database to a workable number which would eventually identify the killer. The closest partial DNA match was from a sibling of Fuller. Police studied their family tree and honed in on one relative, David Fuller. He was born in the mid-1950s and trained as an electrician and maintenance man while working in the Navy shipyard as a Portsmouth. When questioned, Fuller claimed he did not know Tunbridge Wells, despite it being the next major town over. He said he had not visited the photo shop or restaurant where the women worked, and he was certainly not involved in the murders. That, of course, was a lie. Fuller kept piles of old computers, hard drives, discs, phones, and 34,000 printed photographs. He had obsessively recorded his life, invoices he had issued as a maintenance man and electrician, diaries detailing nights out at restaurants, photos showing rides with a cycling club. Police discovered the invoices were for work around Tunbridge Wells. The diary showed he was a regular at Caroline's restaurant. Cycling club members reached back into their memories to describe routes they had followed, including through Romney Marsh, where Caroline's body was discovered. He had actually lived on the same road as Wendy in the 1970s and 80s, before she moved in. One photograph showed Fuller lying on his stomach on a sunny day in the 1980s, his feet upturned, the soles of his shoes exposed. The pattern matched the print found in Wendy's flat, and his fingerprints partially matched the bloody print on the shopping bag. The case became overwhelming when a DNA sample taken from Fuller matched DNA in a semen collected decades before from Caroline's tights. Detectives had found their killer after 33 years. But the investigation was not over. It was about to take an even more disturbing turn. At his house, experts were grappling with computer hardware, hoarded since the 1980s, including hundreds of hard drives, memory cards, and 2,200 obsolete storage disks. He had 30 cell phones and SIM cards. Then they examined a cupboard, inside which a cabinet had been positioned. They pulled it away from the wall, screwed to the back was a holder, a concealed hide, containing four hard drives. On them were videos apparently filmed by Fuller inside a hospital mortuary. When detectives started going through them, they made a sickening discovery. David Fuller had been sexually abusing the bodies of dead people. 
At the hospital where he worked, Fuller had an all-access swipe card, and the mortuary was an area he regularly visited. One end is covered by CCTV cameras, but the other, where the post-mortem examinations take place, has none. Fuller seems to have known this. Police found no footage from the hospital of what he was doing, but his own videos filmed on a small camera were damning. Investigators were able to pause them and read details on patients' wristbands. They cross-referenced metadata on the videos, which showed when they had been filmed with the names of the patients in the mortuary at the time. Fuller even kept a little black book containing his victims' names. This is one of the worst cases of this type anywhere in the world, with police counting 101 victims with ages ranging from 18 to 100. Fuller also has one of the biggest stashes of child sexual abuse images ever discovered by police. Fuller is known to have been abusing the deceased between 2008 and 2020, but there remains a glaring hole in his record. With no known offending between 1987 and 2008, Kent police now are examining the records of missing people. Could he have killed or abused others? David Fuller, the morgue monster, was convicted of the murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce as well as mortuary offenses and received a whole life order. He will die in prison in the UK.